Some of my favorite dyno tests come from what I call what if moments. So I'm testing a 5.7 liter Gen 3 Hemi. We compare shorty headers versus long tube headers. Then I compare a Speedmaster stack injection versus a single plane intake for Mopar performance. Now what if I take aluminum tubing, slide it inside the stack injection, and check the effect of runner length? Does it work? Let's find out. In this video, I ran a number of tests on a 5.7 liter Gen 3 Hemi. Now our Hemi was equipped with a mild camshaft. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. And we also ran a number of tests because while you're on the dyno, why not test as many things as you can? So the first test was shorty headers versus long tube headers. And because we wanted to do it right, I tested, I ran that test with two different intake manifolds with the single plane Mopar performance intake and then again with the stack injection. Now naturally, the intake test was also part of this. We compared the single plane Mopar performance intake versus the Speedmaster stack injection. <laughs> but what's really cool is when I did the do-it-yourself runner extensions. To get things started with our test, we installed our 5.7 liter Gen 3 Hemi up on the dyno. Now this particular one was a basically stock Gen 3. It did have a mild cam in it. It was 550 lift and it was a 210, 216 duration at 50 and 112 degree lobe separation angle. We first equipped this thing with the Mopar Performance single plane intake and a 4154 whole throttle body. This thing had 36 pound ejectors in it. So equipped with that and run with, we started this thing off with shorty headers and just exhaust exiting the shorty headers, just two and a half inch exhaust extensions basically that we put on here and equipped with the shorty headers our 5.7 liter hemi produced 427 horsepower and 385 foot pounds of torque so here's what happened and again this is with the mopar performance intake here's what happened when we install long tube headers as you can see a dramatic change in the shape of the power curve now interestingly enough we didn't see a big change in power at the top Peak power was up to 430 horsepower, but check out the gains down here in the, in the 3,000, 3,500 range, even all the way up to 4,500. We saw significant changes in torque production. So here at 3,400, 341 versus 362, two, so th 31 foot pounds of torque. I mean, that's a pretty significant change from just headers. And as we'll see, you know, the headers are worth a lot. They were worth a lot on this particular combination with the single plane intake. Now let's take a look at this same header test on this 5.7 liter, but equipped with the stack injection from Speedmaster. After running our header test on the, with the single plane intake on our Gen 3 Hemi, I ran a similar test on, well, after we installed the Speedmaster stack injection. I'll show you a photo of that here, really cool stuff. We're obviously after this going to compare the two intake manifolds but I wanted to show you what effect running, comparing the shorty headers to the long tube headers had with the different induction system because a lot of people have questions about that. So this is our combination with the stack injection with shorty headers, this is our 5.7 with the stack injection, 461 horsepower and 413 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what it looked like, and that again is with the shorty headers, same shorty headers that we ran previously. And here is the same combination with the long tube headers. And you'll remember, we saw big gains down low, not as much up top with the single plane intake. Same thing here, when we compared the different headers, big gains down low. See, we had as much as, let's see, 68, 86, about 20, 20 foot pounds down there. Maybe not quite as a big change uh, as with the single plane intake down low, but the, the trend is the same. Bunch of gains down low, not a big gain up at the top. So now let's take a look at the difference between the single plane intake and the Speedmaster stack injection. Now that we've run the header test, we can take a look at the difference between the intake manifold. So we've got our 5.7 liter Gen 3 Hemi with that mild cam in it. And we've got the single plane Mopar performance intake with the 4150 throttle body on it. This was all run with a Holly HP management system. So we had our combination making 430 horsepower and 391 foot-pounds of torque. That was with the single plane intake. 
Now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed that Speedmaster stack injection. Again, with long, both of them have long tube headers. So you can see that the stack injection compared to that single plane intake all the way up to 50, or 6,500 RPM picked up power basically everywhere. And a lot of people are going to point to the fact that it has, you know, tons of throttle opening. It's got eight different uh, butterflies in it, so it has an unrestricted amount of airflow. The reality is that almost all of this is runner length. <laughs> the single plane Mopar Performance intake has very short runner length, which is kind of typical of a single plane intake. By comparison, the stack injection has much longer runners and it basically makes more power everywhere. Both of them have enough flow to feed the amount of power, the, the power output of the motor. They flow enough to do that. As a matter of fact, we've made a lot more power than this with the single plane intake. This really isn't flow. This is reflected way from the intake runner length and I'll show you even more about that when we change the runner length. But these are the gains equipped with the stack injection. It produced 461 horsepower and torque was up to 418 foot-pounds of torque. As you can see, big gains everywhere. So not only does that stack injection look really cool on a Hemi, but it performs very well. Now let's get to the uh, what if, let's change the intake runner light. After running our stack injection from Speedmaster on the Gen 3 Hemi and replacing that single four barrel intake, I decided to have some fun because I had some tubing, aluminum tubing laying around. So what I did was went to my Topeat, get my boys over at Topeat Mufflers, uh, shout out to those guys, and had them actually just flare the tubing for me. So it wasn't a full radius entry, but honestly, the gains that you get from that, just that flare on it are dramatic compared to having a sharp edge. Now we know that a full radius air horn will probably flow more, but the reality is that that tube <laughs> will support probably twice the airflow or the power needs of that cylinder. So it's more than enough airflow. And this really isn't about airflow anyway. So here's the power output of our Gen 3 Hemi with that cam and the stack injection. We we're at 461 horsepower and that was with the standard stack injection. So what I did was slide these tubes in and <laughs> just kind of zip tie and wire them in place so that they would stay there during the run. They moved around a lot. Basically the OD of the tube is about two inches and the ID of the Speedmaster stack injection was bigger than that. So they slid in, they fit okay. Uh, I mean, if you would just set them in there, they didn't stick in there, it would move around and, <laughs> and fly out during the run. That's why I had to secure them. But here's what happened when I installed my custom uh, super stack injection. And this is what we did. The first thing I did was basically in, uh, in extend the stack length by about two inches. So as you can see, more runner length, improved power down low, but above 6,000, we did have a crossover. It started to make a little less power than the standard stack injection. What I would really like to try, and I think would be better for this combination, is that I think that the stack injection that they made should have a smaller diameter tubing used. Um, I think that if they went with two inches, that this system would be better. I don't think you would lose anything up top because then you could have that runner length and then you have a two, a two inch tube and you'd pick up power. But let's go, let's continue with this. I'll show you what happened. Here's what happened when we installed the four inch runner length. We increased the length by four inches. Again, not surprising, more runner length, more power and it picked up mostly uh, in the middle here, although we did have a little bit of gains at the top too, so that, that runner length seemed to be optimum. Now let's take a look, I, I increased it a little bit more, we extended it six inches, and again, lots and lots of torque. Um, as you can see out here though, this is our red line out here at the very top, it fell off pretty hard out there. That almost looks like something happened, <laughs> like one of the runners got jacked up or got wedged or something. But if you look at the rest of the power curve, um, and I'd like to kind of redo that test to see if that fall off was actually real, because that seems like a big change out there for just a two inch change in runner length. But look at all the rest of the curve. I mean, we picked up a ton by changing the runner length by six inches compared to the standard stack injection. We picked up as much as you know, almost 40 foot pounds of torque. So it was quite a bit. So, but this shows you what happens when we increase runner length. And this was not a change in airflow per se. I mean, we didn't, we, again, we didn't have radius entries on it. We did everything. All we did was change the length and we did it easily. We just stuck them in there and hope for the best during the test. Um, it wasn't totally scientific, 
But this is what happens with a change in runner length. Long runners add torque, short runners add power at the top, but they need to be optimized with the camshaft and the size of the engine for a specific operating range. Let's get to our conclusion. So guys, what did you think about this crazy test on runner length? Now we've seen this before, like Fast makes an adjustable manifold for their LS3. I've done a lot of adjustable manifolds because when I put something up on the dyno, and I'll show you some photos here, some of the things, some of the crazy things that I did, but I like to adjust the runner length because it's the thing that makes the biggest difference in power. A lot of guys don't realize that. They say, oh, you want to adjust the plenum volume, but after doing the Keglodon thing that I did where I, put, where I increased the plenum volume by like 3,000% and it basically had no effect on power, I showed that that's a minor thing compared to runner length. Runner length makes a big change, which is why I like testing it. Now, I also want to test taper and all that stuff, which is really cool, but all of that is after the change in runner length. So this change in runner length was cool, and just cutting the tubes allowed me to switch from two inches, four inches, and six inches. It obviously had a big change in the effect of the power curve, even with the stack injection, which the stack injection was already better than that single plane intake, which is kind of designed for high RPM. Also, the header test, same thing, but in reverse. Shorty headers don't usually offer um, a ton of scavenging effect, and so they don't pick up power down low the way a long tube does. And a long tube is tuned to pick up power just like a long runner in the intake is designed to promote low speed power. Both long, both enhanced low speed power, both did exactly that in this test. And they will do that on any engine combination, which is why I tested the headers both on the single plane and on the stack injection, because I know I would have got comments and I want you guys to make comments. Does it work with both intakes? Yes, it always works with both intakes. But if you can match those waves with the intake runner length and the header length, you get even better, uh, better charge filling and, and scavenging and everything, so better power. Now, I'm Richard Holdner, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll keep testing. Got a lot more cool stuff coming.